memberikan workshop, lectures, and then uh, sharing session di 80 negara around the world. So, Dr. Madan Rao is Chief Innovation Officer, Country Director India. So, uh, happy to have you both here, plus your team, and especially Jason, who has been in contact <laughs> with me since last year. So, finally, it's the day. <laughs> Uh, it's, a, it's good that we finally here and have a, a very interesting topic for the day, uh, which is leading a digital workforce. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it to CE and Madan. The time is yours. And kalau teman-teman ada yang mau bertanya, silakan tulis di chat box atau langsung aja untuk klarifikasi bertanya langsung kepada beliau uh, boleh dalam bahasa Indonesia nanti dibantu translate atau kalau dalam bisa bahasa Inggris lebih bagus lagi. Uh, the floor is yours, CE si and Madan. All right, all right. Thank you, thank you, Sandra. Thank you so much for your generous and uh, kind introductions. Uh, we are privileged to be given the opportunity by One HR to be here. Right, we are from BIG Asia Pacific Consulting. Uh, a lot of people pronounce it as big but we are not really very big. BIG is Business Intelligence Group. Yeah? BIG Asia Pacific Consulting. And my colleague Madan and I will spend the next uh, 60 to 70 minutes on uh, sharing leading a digital workforce during this pandemic. Okay. Um, so how are you guys? It's a bit odd to ask this question uh, at this time, but you know what I mean. Okay. We send you our warm greetings. And this is our agenda for this evening. We are going to share about challenges, key challenges to digital workforce today, skill sets, and leveraging co-creation. So first, a little bit about uh, Big APC, right? We are a consulting organization using intelligence platform to provide research insights, leadership and business capability development, and strategic consulting in the Asia Pacific region. First, um, we have used our intelligence cycle, core drivers, incisive levers to provide research, to transfer knowledge and strategies, and strategize for our clients the past 19, almost 20 years now. So our mantra is, you make decisions with intelligence. To know more about us, you can find out more at uh, bigapc.com. Bigapc.com. Okay, you have invested precious time to be here. So let us get down to business, yeah? Okay, today, how many of us look forward to the future. Like, I'd like to start with a poll. Uh, can I have the poll question, please? Just, uh, please tell us, in the next 12 months, what do you feel? Uh, can we have the poll question, please? Uh, Matty? Uh, ah, yeah. Okay, okay the full not... question is out. Yeah, okay. yeah okay. for the next 12 months, what do you feel? Uh, excited about new opportunities, not really bothered, worried about the economy, worried about your health, not sure what to think about the future. Okay, give ourselves another 20 seconds. Okay, I think that's about what we have so far. Yep, uh, maybe you'd like to share the, the result with the rest. I think most of you are excited about new opportunities and this is great. Uh, thank you for your participation. And I think this is uh, one of the ways that we can uh, get to know how you think 
And I'm glad that uh, none of you in this audience are not bothered, you know. None of you are not bothered. You are not ignoring things. So I think this is good. So the next question is, uh, what does the future hold? What does the future hold for us? Right? Everything is changing around us. We can see things changing. And the only certainty, the only certainty is actually uncertainty. Right? Because a dramatic workforce transformation is happening before our eyes. Just in front of us, we can see so many things changing and a major transformation. Right? I want to share with you. Uh, let me remove the pole. Okay, so that you can see. Hopefully you can see now. Yep. Okay. This chart, this chart is a, a revised projection after Q1 last year, right? When uh, COVID-19 hit us or hit organizations, hit countries, and they really uh, affected. And by the end of 2020, it got worse. It got worse for a lot of countries. So COVID-19 actually started first as a health crisis. Then it became a social crisis. And then very quickly, it turned into an economic crisis. Work left offices, factory floors, and other buildings affecting industries and businesses. We used to ask ourselves, what is the future of work? I think there's a lot of talk going around asking, you know, what do you think the, the, the work is going to be like in the future? People talk about gig economy, moving forward, and so on. But I think a more important question or a better question now to ask is, what is the future of workers rather than what is the future of work? What is the future of workers? Okay. Early last year, Someone sent me a list of seven long weekends to look forward to in Singapore. See, I'm based in Singapore, right? So they sent me this. Uh, a long weekend is defined as a Monday holiday or a Friday holiday. So you enjoy long weekend. And somebody came out with a list of seven long weekends to look forward to. But soon I found out that I will be having 52 long weekends in 2020. Instead of, instead of perfect 2020 vision, we all saw a new reality in our lives. Totally unprecedented. We had to go on remote. Telephone, online, video. These are our only tools. Making us use the digital platform. We are forced to use it. So until a cure or effective vaccine is found, we don't really have a choice. So my question to you this evening is, are we all ready for it? Okay. A large company emailed to say, they emailed to me to say that they have gone digital. No more papers or face-to-face -face contact. Okay. Then they sent me, I'm the customer, they sent me a PDF form to fill in. Okay. Well, it is in secure PDF, cannot alter or change or amend anything, and there are no fillable areas. The places for me to fill in are just lines which need my signature and company stamp. <laughs> All they did was to save that physical form in PDF and send it to me. That it's not digitalization. Okay, I can see some of you are smiling and nodding. Yes, you have been there before. Okay, so this is not what it is about. But I want to share with you one article first, right? Thomas Devonpaul and Thomas Redman published a Harvard Business Review article in May, May last year. They identified four 
talents that are needed for digital transformation. And now at our own research in, in BAPC, we agree with these key areas. Okay. So what are they? The four areas are talents in technology, data, process people, organizational change capacity. These may be the most important step for us to get together, to assemble the right team of people okay, in these four domains. Each area requires a certain set of skills. Okay? Now, maybe I can dwell upon it a little bit. In the, in the technology domain, you need people with technological depth as well as breadth and the ability to work hand in hand with business. So leaders of technology domain must be great communicators and have a strategic sense. Okay? You will need this same depth and breadth in the next domain, which is data. You also need the ability to convince many people at, at the front line of the organizations to, to take on these new roles. And these two new roles are data customers and data creators. So one is a consumer of data, one is a creator of data. Okay? For the next domain, process, process people, look for the ability to align silos and to know when incremental process improvement is sufficient or when radical process re-engineering is necessary. Finally, for organizational change capability, look for leadership, teamwork, courage, EQ, and other elements of, uh, of change measurement, uh, change management. Right? Digital transformation can and should be focused on problems of greatest need to the company. So at this stage, uh, I also like to engage with you guys uh, and ask you, what about you? Maybe you can share with us what, are your, what has your experience been so far in trying to turn your organization digital. Please write in the chat. Maybe we can, uh, we can observe a little bit. Has it been challenging? Has it been exciting, interesting, fun, or maybe even horrifying? Don't be shy, you can write in the chat. We won't know who wrote what. Anyone? Okay, let me see. Uh, let me go to my chat. A lot of challenging, saying challenging. A lot of them say challenging, okay. yes. Dia, yes, challenging. Nana also challenging. Monica, challenging. Well, a lot of them say challenging, yes. What about exciting? Earlier on, you all say uh, it's exciting, right? Uh, you, uh, you're excited about the future. So somewhere along the line, yeah, I think this is a good, uh, good, good feedback for us. Somewhere along the line, while we ourselves have this attitude that we are excited about something, about the future, right? But the future sometimes is quite challenging for us, right? It's not really that exciting because when we really want to get something done, we face a lot of obstacles. And that's precisely the reason why uh, I'll be talking about the challenges right after this. All right, thank you. Thank you for your, for your writing in. So the next thing that I want to share with you is... Uh, the challenges. Okay, now let me highlight the top five challenges organizations face in leading their workforce towards digitalization. Okay, their customer experience, employee acceptance, omni channel trend, good working analytics, and legacy business models. Okay, maybe let me take them through one at a time, yeah? 
Earlier, I gave you a poor example of digitalization, which, which customers like you and I will reject, right? If you just, uh, if you just PDF a physical form and you send to me and say, this is how we're going to do forms in future. No, 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 no. We're not going to accept that. Okay. Your transformation must address your customer's experience and expectation. This customer must be willing to change with you. Okay, I show you here a picture. You built a better mouse trap because the mouse has become smarter. Okay, you don't build a better smart mouse trap to make the mouse smarter. Right? So because the customer move on and therefore you change your processes, no, not that way. You change, you transform yourself because your customer has the need to transform. You have to recognize that early. Okay, that's the point that I was trying to make. Now, give me an example here. IKEA, they are in the furniture business, home, home furniture business. They did not showcase their products or pictures of their products. Since nobody could visit their showroom, right? They have a lot of big showrooms, but nobody could visit them during COVID-19. They demonstrated how the furniture, their furniture can fit into the customer's lives and homes and make it come alive on people's phones. Okay, And they, they entertain people using uh, fun and humor that, that only families can appreciate. Okay, you have a family, you know, this is a family of uh, four having fun with it. We have to change our customers' experience in a way that they are willing to accept. Okay, so in, in, in Big APC, we are also big on service redesign during this pandemic. We, we got together to show how organizations can, can reinvent the way they serve their customers in the way they manage their customers' expectations and even do fit design thinking into services that they provide. Okay. Another example I want to show you is the travel industry. Okay. The travel industry was hard hit by the pandemic. And rather than fade into insignificance, Expedia challenged their customers to imagine. They were invited to take a, what they call a digital trip to give their customers hope that they can one day, which is soon, they can resume their holidays, holiday plans this, this year, 2021. Okay, so I want to show you this clip. This clip was viral on mobile devices. So let's take a look at how this goes. Imagine the places we'll go together. Expedia. Okay, the next challenge is uh, employee acceptance. This is a big task because you need to let them choose when, where, and how they work. But when you do that, um, how many in Asia will think that it's easy? Uh, let, me, let me allow my employee to decide when they want to work, where they want to work, how they want to work. It's not that simple, right? It's a big task, right? And also, it blurs the line between personal work, between personal work and social spaces. So this is, uh, this, the lines have blurred because in the past, when uh, your weekend, you socialize eight to six or eight to seven, you work when you come home, it's personal time, family time. So you have blocks of spaces, but now when you're working from home, especially, or working from anywhere at any time, 
the lines are no longer there. The lines are blurred. So when we blur the line between personal and work and social spaces, it becomes a challenge. The digital workforce may be flexible, but it becomes impersonal and less sociable. Okay, Younger employees, for example, will, will miss out from the opportunity to interact with the more experienced ones to learn from them. Those with young families are easily distracted from work. Can you imagine if you have a, a two-year-old or a 10-year-old at home when you're trying to get things done and your, your children suddenly ask you for help, ask you for food or drink or some, some, something, right? And immediately you, you get distracted. So these are all the, the challenges that you, 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 you are faced with. Can we make it worthwhile for people to work from home or work from wherever they want to? One suggestion is you can compensate them for it because you, you actually enjoy some savings, right? But money is not everything. People will not do it just because there's money behind it. Next one is the, the challenge of omni-channel experience. Okay, let me just give you an example here. Your customer's retail experience in retail, uh, is different from their online experience. And if you offer a mix of both, their expectations are also different. That is called multi-channel service. Okay, So to simply put it, omni-channel is multi-channel offering with a consistent and personal experience. Okay? So I want to be able to interact with the brand, right? But I want it online, through social, on my mobile, in-store, and so on. But I want all these interactions to be unified, to be consistent and personal to me. Okay. Let me give you one example. Grab offers Grab Taxi, Grab Hitch, Grab Mart, and Grab Food. Okay, there are more, but I'm just listing these four for you, right? But you know what? These are four very different services. However, Grab customers enjoy the same experience when they get a taxi service or they are hitching a ride or ordering food delivery or receiving help to buy groceries. See, unfortunately, many organizations don't share their data across online, retail, and hybrid channels. And if you don't share that data across the channels, you cannot integrate this to have one unique experience for your customers. So this is one big challenge. One more example I want to show you is Japan Home. I don't know whether it's available in Indonesia, but Japan Home offers Japanese products in Asian countries. They are, they are in, in Seoul, in Hong Kong, in Singapore, in Malaysia. So Japan Home offers these products, only Japanese products in Asian countries. It has small retail shops packed with stuff, full. The, the shop is full. But it also offers an online service. The shopping experience online and offline are identical. And almost all of the profit, guess what? Almost all of the profit comes from the online channel. However, they needed the retail presence for the online channel to become profitable. They still need the retail presence. Okay, so then we move on to the next one, which is the analytics. So we get to analytics. Good analytics is like a ghost. Many people talk about it but very few people have experienced it, okay? There is power in well-analyzed intelligence. The challenge is in using it. How do we use that analytics that we have, right? I give you one example. Driverless cars were asked this question, right? I think you, uh, you know about the driverless cars, right? Will you cause an accident that might kill others just to save your passenger. Now remember, the car is not an individual. Right? The car cannot think like us. 
no moral values, right? So will you cause an accident that might kill others just to save your own passenger? They will ask this question. And you guess what? This is the result, okay? In this scenario, in this particular uh, report, the driver ignored all warnings, okay? So even though you got your analytics, does it work well? Even for Tesla, it may not work well. Okay, some other reasons for, for poor analytics are using uh, phantom data, data that don't, never existed in the first place. Uh, they were blindsided by data, right? Too much data. A dependence on models, a statistical model. They use statistical model and they are lacking of critical volume. Okay, this one's very famous. Vaccines used to be approved after a minimum of four to five years of trials on hundreds of thousands of cases. You do many, many, many trials. Today, we have a wide offering of COVID-19 vaccines. You know, you have your Moderna, you have Pfizer, uh, uh, what, something Bion, uh, Sinovac. Uh, India has a few, right, Madan? So I think, yeah, there, 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 there are so many versions, right? But after just one year, how robust are the analytics? Something to think about. Then the last big challenge is dropping a le legacy business model. I mean, how do you drop off a legacy business model? You currently have a business model, it's working well, it's making profit for you, but now, you have to move on to go digital. And to do digital means what? You have to give up some of the things. Now, I think uh, we are very familiar with the, the story of Kodak, right? Kodak's demise due to digital imaging. Now, let me ask you something very interesting, if you know. How many of you know that the digital imaging patterns actually belonged to Kodak? Kodak has the patterns. It's not because someone is threatening them. They own the pattern, but Kodak feared what digital would do to its legacy business in films. So as a result, you all know what happened. In 2012, Kodak sold over a thousand patterns on digital imaging to Apple, Google, Facebook, and other tech giants. For how much? Half a billion dollars only. Just for half a billion dollars. They ignored a multi-billion dollar industry and now that's all they got. Half a billion dollars. Okay? So leadership complacency, having a niched audience, changing customer taste, valuing short-term losses, etc. These are factors that create this particular challenge, all right? Because we have a business model and we are afraid. We are afraid to lose it. So it is important to learn that people fix technology and processes, but they cannot fix themselves. So our legacy is something very, very difficult for us to fix. So now just give, this is something you're very familiar with. Think of how Google add their business models. Like Google has a lot of apps, a lot of model businesses, many services that they are on offer, but the user's engagement is consistent. All services started as what? Free, right? Chrome was free, Gmail was free, uh, many other things was free. Google, you recall, Google call, voice over IP used to be free. So many things are free, right? Then they gradually add advertisements until they become a distraction to you. Whenever you use, you got to watch this advertisement. Subsequently, for a fee, you can now enjoy ad-free services. So they call it the premium service. Like your YouTube used to be free. Now, if you want, don't want advertisement, yeah, pay, pay premium. But actually, the ads are targeted at you. They are relevant to you because Google knows you so well. 
All right, so I have highlighted five of the big challenges for your consideration in leading a digital workforce. Okay, of course, I'm not going to leave you hanging by just telling you all the challenges, all the pains and all that, right? My colleague Madan will now go into the skill sets that will allow you to, to access the many avenues of leverage, okay, especially co-creation. So while he's getting ready, I want to show you Google Duplex. It's about a five-minute video on how digital our lives can be. All right, this uh, video was presented by the CEO himself. Just uh, listen to it. As I said earlier, our vision for our system is to help you get things done. It turns out a big part of getting things done is making a phone call. You may want to get an oil change schedule, maybe call a plumber in the middle of the week, or even schedule a haircut appointment. You know, we are working hard to help users through those moments. We want to connect users to businesses in a good way. Businesses actually rely a lot on this, but even in the US, 60% of small businesses don't have an online booking system set up. We think AI can help with this problem. So let's go back to this example. Let's say you want to ask Google to make you a haircut appointment on Tuesday between 10 and noon. What happens is the Google Assistant makes the call seamlessly in the background for you. So what you're going to hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. Let's listen. Hi, I'm calling to book a women's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. That was a real call you just heard. The amazing thing is the assistant can actually understand the nuances of conversation. We've been working on this technology for many years. It's called Google Duplex. It brings together all our investments over the years in natural language understanding, deep learning, text-to-speech. By the way, when we are done, the assistant can give you a confirmation notification saying your appointment has been taken care of. Let me give you another example. Let's say you want to call a restaurant, but maybe it's a small restaurant which is not easily available to book online. The call actually goes a bit differently than expected. So take a listen. See how may I hear you? Hi, um, I'd like to reserve a table for Wednesday the 7th. For seven people? Um, it's for four people. For people, when? Um, day, night? Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, actually, we live here for like upper like uh, five people. For few, four people, you can come. How long is the wait usually to uh, be seated? For when tomorrow or weekday or? For next Wednesday, uh, the seventh. Oh no, it's not too busy. You you, you can come for four people, okay? Oh, I got gotcha. you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Again, that was a real call. We have many of these examples where the calls quite don't go as expected, but the assistant understands the context, the nuance. It knew to ask for wait times in this case and handle the interaction gracefully. Ada, do you like to share your screen or you want me to share?
มาได้ยอมมิวมาได้ยอมมิวอยากคุณเห็นไหมนะใช่ค่ะอยากขอโทษครับขอโทษครับท่านผู้ชมอาจจะเป็นความแตกต่างบางทีกับการใช้คำพูดที่ไม่ถูกต้องอย่างไรก็ตามแต่ฉันอยู่กับคุณมาดันฉันมาจากอินเดียและเรามีคนมาจากสองประเทศอินโดนีเซียอินเดียสิงคโปร์มาเลเซียดังนั้นขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับขอโทษครับ You can use digital internally for customer purposes and so on. I'm going to share with you now what does digital exactly mean, and what can you do to use digital skills for your company. CE presented some very interesting research. I shall share with you some of our own research, research which we have done, and also from some of these books that we have been reading in the past one month. Every other day, there's a new book about digital, digital technology, creativity, knowledge management, data storytelling. Innovation. So, how did this all come together? We have been talking about digital for quite some time now. Let's take a look at what digital exactly means. This is a table that we've come up with for all of you called the digital matrix. It's got four rows and three columns. As you can see, all digital technologies fall into four categories: content, which is audio, video, text, documents, and so on; communication. <laughs> Messaging, video, WhatsApp, Telegram, and so on. Collaboration, which can be an ERP inside your company, or it can be Google Docs when you share it with other people. And finally, computation, which is what we just saw in the video. Artificial intelligence, machine language, analytics, a huge amount of technology computation. Now you can use this in two ways. One is internally inside your company. There are a lot of enterprise technologies meant for use. Inside the company, and there are also external-facing technologies. Most of social media is a great example. It faces the consumer. Okay, so this is the matrix which let us now fill out. You may be wondering what is the use of this table? It's empty right now. I'm going to show you how to fill it with what kinds of digital tools do we want to use? What kinds of digital skills do we have? What kind of budget do we have? What is our roadmap for each of these technologies? Let's take a look at this slide now. This is the world of digital tools. Now, these are just some samples I put on this slide. You can take a look at this slide yourself afterwards and fill in the boxes with whatever you want. For example, content. It can be a website. You may have your own app for the consumer. Internally, you may have a database of best practices. Communication. You may internally have your own communication tools. Outside, you're using maybe WhatsApp, Signal, Telegram, and so on. For collaboration, many big companies have their own internal portals. Externally, they may use something like Google Docs for collaboration. In terms of computation, maybe some of you already are using analytics, AI, ML, etc., or you're creating some software code for other people to use, like open source, Linux, and so on. So this is a map which, for each of you, will look somewhat different. Some basic elements will be common, but there will be some differences. So we've come from uh, digital technology to digital tools in this table. Let us go to digital skills now. What skills do you need to use these technologies? Ladies and gentlemen, this is maybe one of my most important slides for you today, which is how do you map your digital skills onto this tool, this digital matrix? As you can see, I've broken it up as an example into content. Internal content would be maybe intranet publishing. How to publish content from your own intranet? External-facing content can be how do I do good website design? How do I make it very interactive in the app? In terms of communication, you may need different kinds of skills internally for knowledge sharing, for people to do mentoring online, for people to do these kinds of webinars that like what we're doing right now. Externally, you may need to do search engine optimization, digital marketing. These are different ways for you to communicate with your customers. Then there is collaboration. Internal digital skills that you need are 
cross functional teams how do different teams fit together business technology design uh, it administration then you take a look outside the customer outside at your customers outside your company how do you use the internet for example or mobile or whatsapp to co-create with the customers to come up with different ideas to ask for suggestions from the customers to come up with a collaboration scheme with your business partners design a new product offering for your partners together then there is the internal competition part ce mentioned earlier the example of google that was a great example of using analytics and ai for finding out what inventory do we have of appointments what are the hr skills that we have and so on you may also use these competition skills externally to predict customer behavior predictive computing is a big part of digital these days how to not just understand what are your customers doing today but what might they do in the future okay so this is the digital skill sets matrix this again is a very important slide for you all to remember you can fill out all these boxes differently depending on the own needs of your own company so the four kinds of digital technologies tools skill sets and whether it is internally used or externally used okay so let's see now how all this comes in the face of a company what does all this mean for the leadership the managers and the employees of a company at the top level leaders is your digital strategy ce mentioned in the first part of this presentation the strategy and the road map what is your road map for digital transformation in the next 3 months 6 months 1 year 2 years then you have the level of managers i'm guessing most of you are managers or leaders in the audience today so you would need for example simple tools like a digital dashboard what is happening in my company today what happened in the last week in the last one month in terms of revenue sales talent uh, uh, communication initiatives inside the company how many trainings did we do what is the feedback from the employees and finally at the level of employees this is what digital means for them how can they learn with each other how can they co create with their customers how do you teach your customer service representative not just to talk on the phone and get feedback from the customer but to use an app to use a form online and use that so that you can use data for analytics and training your own software as you can see on the right this is a list of skills from the world economic forum they published a very good report recently on the top 10 skills needed for the future and as you can guess digital fits in two of these categories how to use digital and how to create digital so this is your map that you should be having at the back of your mind or on your uh, dashboards in the company what do leaders do with digital what do managers do with digital and what do employees do with digital what skills do i need to be able to use digital so that it fits into my plan for the year for the quarter and for the next 3 years your strategy your dashboards and your peer learning now let's take a look at what this means for each of your organizations i want you to pause for a minute and just think about all that i just told you the different kinds of digital technologies internal external use some examples of how it is being used so write down maybe in the chat window what do you think your company's strengths are today for the digital journey so go to the chat window and just type in your strengths it can be maybe i have good technology already uh, i have very good talented people something of that sort what are your strengths today in your digital journey ce some good comments coming in okay okay you get the idea this is something you should do when you go back to your organization and take a look and do an audit in your organization not just strengths what are the strengths today what are the weaknesses what are the opportunities what is the threat coming from the competition in the digital space now let's take a look at examples enough of theory i gave you a very good theoretical slide the table of the four kinds of digital technology and internal and external use let's take a look now at three key areas where digital is being used customer intelligence we do a lot of work with our clients on how to use digital for getting better customer insights some simple examples that you can see in the business literature are starbucks they created a platform called my starbucks idea and they asked all the people out there who came to starbucks 
how do you think we should improve the design of our store? What kind of flavors of coffee do you want? And they actually implemented many of these ideas. Some of you may be using Spotify and all these music streaming services. Guess what? Spotify is watching and listing what are your music preferences. And based on that, they recommend for you new kinds of music, new kinds of artists, which are similar to what you like. You all are familiar with Tokopedia. All of us across Asia know about this great case study of e-commerce. They have a lot of intelligence. Who is buying what? At what time of the day? In what quantity? At what price? In what location? How often every week? These are very important customer intelligence analytics, which digital gives you. The second is product development and service design. We do a lot of work helping our customers in designing better services. And you can see a lot of great examples out there already documented. For example, Netflix. Netflix is an amazing company. They not just look at what movies you watch and listen to. They also come up with predictions on if you like this kind of a movie, we will create this kind of a movie for you. So they have gone from just understanding and watching movies to creating their own movies because of digital insights into your mind, into your wallet. I talked about Linux already, how people are creating open source on digital platforms like the internet. And one of the greatest examples in Asia is Gojek, how they started off as a motorcycle taxi company and they expanded into food delivery, into home massages, into mobile money. So based on the same digital stack, the same digital platform they use for the motorcycle taxi company, they modified it to go into all kinds of adjacent areas from taxi to delivery, to mobility, to finance, to home services. So once you have a good digital strategy and a good digital skill sets, you can expand to a whole bunch of other areas. Another focus area of big APC is employee engagement for innovation and knowledge management. A great example here that we see in the literature is Amazon Prime. You all know the company Amazon and its CEO, Jeff Bezos. He's a brilliant guy with a lot of ideas. But one amazing thing in this company is they use a tool, a digital tool internally, where employees can submit ideas. And the management looks at these ideas and says, yes, this is a good idea. This one is OK. Yeah, this is another fantastic idea. And that is where Amazon Prime came from. Amazon Prime is a multi-billion dollar property for Amazon, for people to do single day shopping, for people to get movies online. This idea did not come from Jeff Bezos. It came from an employee. But this company had a digital platform for employees to give them this idea. We've also done different kinds of engagement in Brunei for government agencies to have an engagement exercise called an innovation jam. So how can we use digital technology to improve the education sector, the tourism sector, the SMB sector? Now, all this sounds nice, but there are problems. Let me caution you, ladies and gentlemen, that it's one thing to start a digital journey, but there are also some challenges. My colleague C mentioned some challenges to you earlier. I'll mention a few more. Number one, Many employees uh, are asked, give us ideas in a suggestion box. Unfortunately, many of these ideas are never read or they're never rewarded. So many companies I know, many employees I know in these companies tell me, yeah, you know, my company says, give me ideas, but nothing ever happens. So what's the point in giving ideas? So if you are going to implement an online idea suggestion scheme, make sure you follow it up. Second one, customer data. C gave us the example of that form, which is only in PDF, etc. That's one example, which is um, a lot of companies are gathering data, but they're not using it. What is data being used for? The other example C also mentioned was coming up with new products, but not moving away from the old ones. There are many companies stuck on their old product, but they can't move to the new one like Kodak. And last but not least is work from home. We are a good example right now of a community using learning on, from online, working from home to exchange ideas, to talk, to give ideas to each other, learn from each other and so on. But not many companies are good at this yet. It is tough. Internet connection problems, uh, work-life balance problem, kids running around, pets running around, doorbell ringing. It's a big challenge how to get this work from home thing to work properly. So ladies and gentlemen, again, these are some of the four challenges that we've come across in digital transformation. Now I'm going to give you some case studies. I mentioned earlier that we do a lot of research. This is some research which we have published ourselves about digital transformation for business. Let's take a look at these two categories here. There's an award called the Make Award, Most Admired Knowledge Enterprise, which used to be given for the top companies in the world who do knowledge management. 
These are two case studies. One is AFCON's infrastructure. This is a construction company in Asia and Africa. And you may be wondering, what is a construction company doing using digital? Well, guess what? They have an internal portal now, a digital online platform where employees can exchange knowledge with each other on best practices. They have a lot of young employees and they prefer video communication. So they have an internal podcast channel for people to do audio and video communication. They now are gathering together best practices for work from home and how to access experts if you cannot meet them face to face. CE mentioned that because of work from home, students, uh, employees, new employees aren't able to meet the boss. It's only online, they can't interact very well. So how do you do all this stuff online is a big issue for this company. Second example, chemicals industry. Again, you may be wondering, what is a chemicals company doing using IT, using digital? Guess what? Tata Chemicals has a digital portal inside. They have a best practice repository or a database, which is indexed, size of the project, date of the project, who worked on the project, how many dollars of revenue do we get from the project? What are the learnings from this project? All that can be searched online. They have communities of practice. So there's not just content, there's also forums. I can ask who worked on this project? Can you give me some new ideas? They use Agile to respond very quickly to challenges like the COVID crisis. And they also have a very interesting practice called resilience stories. Stories of resilience. Which employee did the best job during COVID? Which employee did the best job uh, dealing with new kinds of factory changes? And they share these stories through video, through audio, and so on. A great example of connecting the oldest form of communication, human storytelling, with the latest form, digital technology. So let's take a look at how this works in AFCONS. Quick snapshot. This is a figure they shared with us on how for best practices sharing, they have a model called learn before, learn during, and learn after. And here's where digital comes into the picture. The first part is the portal. Before you do any project, you search. Have we done a similar project before? What are the problems? What's the profitability of this project? During the project, you can ask for experts for quick help if you have a problem. There's a problem with the bridge. This lever is not coming into place. Who's the expert in the company? Give me advice immediately. So there's an online indexing scheme and you can contact all these experts immediately during the project. And last but not least, at the end, you capture all these lessons into documents which can be searched, which can be published in video form, text form, and so on. So a great example of the use of digital skills, digital transformation inside the company to improve the learning. A few more examples and then we'll wrap up. These are one example is from Indonesia itself. This is a winner of the another kind of an award called the most innovative knowledge enterprise. Companies which combine knowledge and innovation. This is Binus University in Indonesia. As you all probably know, during the COVID crisis, during the pandemic, every school, every college, every university in the world did not know what to do and move all these courses online. But guess what? Binus University was prepared. They already were doing online learning early on and they were able to move the learning management systems onto the mobile platform. So many of the courses could be taught online. And this is a great award-winning example from Indonesia of digital transformation, digital skills in the education sector. Last example from the Mike Award I'll give you is a petroleum company, Petroleum Development Oman. And again, you must be wondering, what is an oil company doing with digital technology? Well, they're doing one heck of a lot. They have a learning knowledge base. So all the of you in the L&D department, what they do is they capture all these best practices and lessons of the company, and they convert that into courses, internal courses for teaching people on the job using digital platforms. They also are using remote virtual collaboration right now. And as you can guess, safety of the workplace is a key concern in the COVID era. How much distancing should I have in the office? How to avoid overcrowding at lunchtime in the canteen? These are all very serious issues in the post-COVID era for companies to plan. And this is where you can collect all these best practices using digital. You can put sensors in the canteen and watch in real time how many employees are coming for lunch, how many people are coming for coffee, how to space it out so that the crowd is less. Digital is key in designing safe workplaces today. This is a quick snapshot again from PDO, Petroleum Development of Oman. You will have all these slides, so don't worry if it's a bit difficult to read right now. You can see it later. But on the left, very similar to the table I showed you in the beginning of my session, the four types of digital, content, communication, collaboration, competition. These are their four kinds of game component. And on the right are the impact areas. Because you have digital, you can find information faster. 
you can find people faster. You can reduce the amount of mistakes it takes. You can improve the workplace safety because of digital skills. So these are all the different ways in which you can map digital tools, digital technology, digital skills, and digital impact for businesses, both internally and externally. Okay, so this is a great example of combining all the different kinds of digital technologies into one space. Now, before I finish, I want to do one more small reflection activity. Again, in the chat window, I would like you to go to the chat window and type in, in what area uh, can I have the best impact for digital in my company? Where can digital make the best impact in my company? I'll give you a couple of hints. Maybe customer service in your company can be improved. Maybe learning and development or up to you. So think for a minute. You go to the chat window and just tell us in what area do you think digital can make a big impact? Many of you said in the beginning, you're excited. There are some challenges, but it's going to be a rewarding experience. Where do you think digital will make an impact? Yeah, sales is fun. Yes. Performance, yes. Any other areas? We asked similar questions in earlier workshops and people who tell us things like risk management, productivity, uh, employee engagement, things of that sort. A lot of uh, hints. Uh, business process, yeah, Anastasia, yeah. Yeah, engagement. Uh, no, no, what kind of engagement? Employee engagement, ah, yes. Okay, correct, yeah, in turn, yes, good. Customer service, right, Monica, yeah. Any more? Best impact. Ah, mindset, yes. Yes, yeah. yeah. Nobody mentioned anything about product or service. Just customer service or product offering, service offering. Great. So you can keep those comments coming. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, this is the kind of reflection activity that you should all be doing, which is every time you read case studies about digital. Yeah, sorry. Any more coming? Okay, yeah. Okay, so you get the idea. These are different kinds of digital impacts in your organization, which you can plan for in the future. Now, I'm going to end with my last case study and then we open up the floor to Q&A. Uh, this is one engagement which we were involved in in this company for three years. This was a very long initiative for knowledge management based on digital platforms and digital skilling. So this company, Vero Systems, is a leading IT services firm. They were bought over by Dell a few years ago. And uh, a big part of their strategy was how to improve knowledge sharing, knowledge management, and collaborative learning in the company. So the learning and development department, the uh, marketing department, and the IT department came together with the strategy officer to design this whole thing over a period of three years. So the infrastructure was a portal and people could submit ideas, concepts, mm -hmm. best practices. And we added a gamification element. You can rate and rank. Uh, I think this is the best case study. I think his idea is better. I like his idea, but I want to wait for some time and see if it works. I like these two ideas from this guy. He's a good guy to watch. Mm -hmm. Let's get more ideas from this guy. These were some of the kinds of things that happened on the digital portal. We also had to do a lot of workshops and training because not everyone can pick up everything immediately. Everybody still needs to be taught things about how to use even simple things like WhatsApp, email, and so on. So we had the competition, as you can see on the right, Redeem, which is submit a customer case study. And based on the winners, you get different kinds of points, which can convert into a prize. So we gave prizes for the best case study, the best team, the best new idea. All of this based on a top of a digital platform. So digital tools over here were the enabler. Digital skills were the enabler for effective knowledge management, 
productivity and profitability in the company. So to wrap up, ladies and gentlemen, if you get your strategy right, if you connect what CE said in terms of the digital framework, and if you connect it to the examples and the digital metrics that I presented, you will have these four results of digital transformation. Number one, a product portfolio, which is very sensitive to new customer needs. Because you are using digital, you know exactly what your customer is saying today. You can predict what they may be saying tomorrow. That is a good product portfolio. Second is growth. Business is not just about this quarter. It's about next year, next two years, next three years. It's all about growth with new partners and new alliances. Look at what's happening because of COVID. We have to work with companies we never used to work with before, simply because we have to find out how to innovate and come up with new ideas. We have to work with government. We have to work with universities. You and I are talking together. I never met any of you before. But because of COVID, we are all talking and discussing how to work together and co-create new skill sets, new mindsets. Three, operations. Because of digital, you will be able to get a good, robust knowledge system and a learning practice. If you have good digital tools internally, you can learn from each other in a much more effective manner. And last but not least, it's mostly about the As CE mentioned earlier, it's not about knowledge work, it's about knowledge workers. This is what I mean by knowledge workers, the people. You have to have people who are creative. They can think on their own. They don't need to be taught or told what to do anymore. They can think for themselves. They are confident. Even if they say, oh, I don't know this right now, they will say, you know, I can learn it. I'll take a course online and I will learn it. I will ask a mentor for advice and then learn it. And last but not least is collaborative. They will learn how to collaborate internally and with each other. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I come to the end of my presentation. This is 2021. It is not just a new year. It is a new decade. This is the 2020s decade. And this is a great chance to begin rethinking your digital journey based on digital tool set, skill set, and mindset. Let's go for it. Q&A. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have some discussion and free-flowing Q&A. My colleague, CE and I, as well as Jason and Kani, are here to answer your questions. Fire away. Yeah, you can either ask a live question or you can type into the chat if you don't if you think you want to phrase it. Right. Uh, I think one of you wrote that uh, we want digital team to change the way we do things precisely. You want to you want to build better mousetraps, right? But yeah, maybe similar with startups because you want to think like startups. And you know what startups do, right? Because they they either grow big, grow fast, or they die. So I think this is something we, we want to make sure that uh, we, we prepare ourselves. And in fact, um, what both Madan and myself has been sharing this evening is preparation is perhaps the only tool that you have today. We're happy to answer some of your questions. Uh, I can start uh, asking questions. <laughs> Um, I think the, the, some companies are in survival mode and there are a lot of layoffs and terminations, a lot of cost saving and probably not much into investment in digitalization. So how, how can we balance this, you know, being uh, surviving in this pandemic era as well as being digitalized organization at the same time? to even you know survive for the longer term so how can how can we do this both okay Mana, you want to take this or you want me to yeah you, you start i'll jump in just making a few okay noise. i think uh firstly good question um how do we balance um the investment into digital while we try to make ends meet uh, make try to survive uh, yes. it's, it's, it's a very delicate balance and a lot of, a lot of companies say, uh, I, I need to save, I need to save cost. It's, uh, if I take this, everybody back 25 years, um, training, learning and development used to be uh, one of the first areas to be cut whenever a company needs to reduce budget. Do you remember those days? And uh, let's say a company 
is not doing very well, they need to show profits, uh, they need to cut their budgets. The first area they choose to cut used to be training, used to be learning and development. And because people felt that uh, these are the easiest to dispense of. In fact, uh, that's something we learn on hindsight. It's, it's not true. It's very wrong. It's in fact, uh, it cripples the organization. Because training and development is something that is continuous. It is building and rebuilding, skilling and reskilling your people. So coming back to your question in terms of uh, people trying to survive, and uh, I have this much money only, how do I balance, right? The priority should be, to, since you have the time, right? Uh, market is slow, the, the operations are slow, you have the time, you should invest it on the people. And I think at a, at a national level, I would like to share what uh, the Singapore government has done. Uh, when in the past, uh, the government used to be pushing people for in, the Singaporeans to work in the manufacturing sector. And today there's no more manufacturing sector in Singapore. Right, because uh, everywhere else is cheaper, more competitive, and so on. But the people have been trained. The people, uh, regardless of whether you are lower level, higher level, middle level, they have been trained, they have been prepared, they have been skilled to do other things like pharmaceutical, uh, oil and gas. They can go to other areas. So this is something we talk about, uh, Madan shared with uh, upskilling and cross-skilling. And we need that element to come in. And people need to recognize that. So companies need to, to see that. And the, the reason why this question is asked, why we need to balance, in fact, I would dare say, we shouldn't be talking about balancing. We should be talking about prioritizing. Yeah. Madan, you want to have anything? Yeah. In? I, th I think it also depends maybe on uh, which sector that you are in. So what C said is bang on target for almost every company. I would add a few more details. For example, if you are in any retail kind of a sector, you have to do e-commerce now. You have no choice but to go online. So that is a very important part of what you need to do. Second is if you are in a very high risk area, you need to collect stories, stories of employees who are doing very brave things and share these online. And thirdly, if there's a lot of regulatory change, if the government is changing your, for example, import-export laws, you need to be learning very quickly on how to respond to environmental change. So you need a digital platform to absorb and share these kinds of lessons. So I would say, depending on your the industry that you're in, uh, you need to look at customer uh, transactions, how to take transactions online. Uh, you will need to do some motivational uh, storytelling inside your company and publish this online. And thirdly, regulation. You need to use technology to keep up with regulation. Yeah, I think uh, I probably uh, speak for the other uh, people who are in tourism, transportation, and property. I think those areas are the industry affected the most uh, during the pandemic area. So era. So um, doing the upskilling or reskilling might not be uh, easy because that doesn't bring money and the company might be gone within three months uh, due to nobody go on travel, nobody goes on tourism and the property are not doing well. So I guess uh, really balancing is something that I'm looking at rather than prioritizing because survival is number one, but then how can you, how can you survive while you do digitalization in the company? Um, and leaving some people um, on salary cut or even termination. So that's, that's a challenge. Yeah, that, that's a good example you gave, Sandra. Tourism, I can tell you from the example of India, international tourism is zero for yeah. the one year. Yeah. And maybe for the next uh, rest of this year also, yeah. international tourism is zero. So you have to reinvent for domestic tourism. So within the country, within the state, people are traveling. So you must redesign and publish all this information on your website, which is for people coming from within the states, we have these special deals. We have these special kinds of offers. You create an app where people can find out the latest offers online. So you need to use the internet to push information out very quickly. 
But for that, internal and external must coordinate. Internally, how much of a budget cut are we taking? How much of a salary cut are we taking? Based on that, how much can we invest in digital marketing? That is the balance. You're right. There is a balance. You must think some cut to at least keep some sustainable tourism up and running. See, you want to add to that with another example? Yeah, I, I, particularly I like to address what Sandra said. I think um, when I say priority, prioritize rather than uh, the balance is because uh, we we accept the fact that uh, when the economy is completely locked down or slowed down, uh, a few sectors will be impacted, definitely. And um, we are not saying that um, just because you digitalized, you will not you will not go under, you will not disappear, and all that. Uh, I think what I was referring to is when you have the opportunity to to train people, to develop people, or to teach, or to offer them ways to digitalize, you should, okay? Uh, obviously, if, if you can't even find enough, uh, enough profit to pay the bills, right? <laughs> to pay your rental, to pay your electricity and uh, your workers' salary, I think uh, obviously that, that takes precedence, definitely, yeah. But uh, I, I'm not denying the fact that uh, this COVID-19 situation has affected many industries and many sectors, but I'm saying those that are able to, to consider digitalization, they should prioritize the learning, the skilling part, because without that, uh, whatever, whatever uh, systems or, you know, whatever you want to do, whatever kind of transformation, even small transformation will be impossible or it will be very poorly supported. And, and, and in, in the end, you, you end up losing more than you invested. So that, 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 I hope that clarifies what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying that uh, if you, between paying a salary and training someone, you, you don't pay the salary, but you train someone instead. No, no, I'm not saying that. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. But so, I think uh, one, one interesting thing is you talk about tourism, right? Let me just yeah. share what, what we did uh, experience in Singapore, right? Uh, you all know that Singapore is very big on tourism. And mm. uh, Singapore Airlines, for example, they have been uh, badly affected. Yeah. Uh, air stewardess, the air hostess, are working in hospitals because they're in hospitality business. So they, they, they diverted them. They were, to, they were helping nurses. They were, they were like secondary nurses in hospital, ah, right? They were, they were re-channeled to other resources. Mm -hmm. And there's one unique thing that they did was uh, they created this, this dinner menu for, for people in SIA. You can go to the plane, you can board the plane, but the plane doesn't take off, right? You can board the plane. <laughs> so they dine the there. Mm -hmm. And you okay. dine in the plane. And it was exquisite food. Creative, so, yeah. yeah. So these are the ways that they can they can do, but obviously it doesn't pay the bills because the planes cost millions, and mm. uh, no no airline will buy the planes cash, uh, cash right. So they have loans to pay and all that, and these yeah. loans are in millions. Obviously, whatever menu that you come up with, nobody's gonna be able to afford it. But yeah, madam. There are three more questions. Would you yeah. like to look, uh, take a look at it? Yeah, uh, I saw the last question. I think it's a very nice one, which is how do you keep engagement in a fully distributed workforce? How do you, uh, when new people are added to the company, how do they get used to the culture of the company? Fantastic question. I would say there are three kinds of activities. One is somewhat like the Zoom call right now when everyone is together. You organize a mini Zoom call with different groups of people together online so people can see each other. At least for the first two minutes of the Zoom call, everyone should put the video on so you can see the faces of all the people. So that is one group activity online. Second is, as an HR person, you must be able to think in advance, who do you think will be good people to connect and network to each other? What they call the buddy system. For each employee, you think who might be a good buddy for this person and you connect them online. And you say, once a week, each of you should spend 10 minutes, 20 minutes online together and exchange things with each other. And then you shuffle the buddies. Every week you get a new buddy. So these are informal. What happens in the discussion is entirely private. It doesn't happen maybe on the company's uh, intranet. It happens on WhatsApp or Zoom or whatever. And the third is a ritual. You do some activity like every Friday, uh, 
TGIF or a Monday coffee or a, a Wednesday kebab session, something like that. You get everyone together and say, let us all drink coffee together and just talk about whose birthdays are there this month, something like that. So you have to invest a lot of time in designing these activities. This is called interaction design. How do you design online interactions in the digital environment so people feel more engaged? See, you want to take one of the other questions? Yeah, yeah. I, I'd like to answer this. Uh, please share any tips to change the mindset of people. In fact, Mana, can you share your last, the second last slide that you have? Okay, let me reshare. Three Cs. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, the, yeah, this one. Yeah. Right? And I think uh, to change mindset is not something easy. The people need to develop that. But I think what we can do is to encourage them to uh, challenging them to be creative, giving them the confidence, the assurance. And most importantly, putting them together, like what Madan said, right? The interaction, the interaction design, putting them together so that they are forced to collaborate. When people are forced to collaborate, they begin to think of more than just themselves. They begin to think about others. They, they begin to think outwards, upwards, and they think about growth. So this is, this is the start of uh, changing mindsets, right? There's three C's that Madan spoke about. First, you encourage people to be creative but they give them the assurance so that they are confident. If I make mistakes, I'm not going to be punished. right? If I make mistakes, let's learn from it. And you force people to work together. And I think if you see in, even in public, let's say crowdfunding, people may even contribute money to strangers for a good cause. right? So when this collaborative act come together, people begin to see outside beyond themselves. And that is the start of the growth mindset, right? Uh, then there's a second, another one from Intan. How can we access the digital transformation strategy aligned with business priorities? Okay, firstly, uh, then the second one is what is the most influential digital technology in implementing digital transformation? Uh, I'll take the easy one first. Let's answer the question two, right? Um, digital technology is not static, uh, it's not stay by itself alone. It keeps on evolving, it keeps on changing. So you can't say that there is a digital technology that's influential. I mean, 25 years ago, the internet was the most influential technology. Today, everybody assumes the internet is, you know, when you wake up early in the morning, you never expect no internet, right? You don't expect that your Wi-Fi <coughs> is not working, correct? So even children today, when they grow up, they don't know what is it like a world without Wi-Fi. So in, in that sense, there is no single influential technology. But I think uh, you look at your own organization's needs, okay, which answers the first question. What are your business priorities? I think most, yeah, I, I won't be wrong if I say most businesses prioritize their customers. Okay, because... Uh, without customers, you have no business, right? You can't sell to anyone. You can't market to anyone. And I think the, the digital transformation strategy should be aligned towards what the customer wants and how you can satisfy them. So you can either do uh, provide your services through digital means. You can uh, do customer service digitally. You can also market your product your services digitally as well. And that calls for redesigning or re-innovating your products or your services in a digital way. And once you start thinking about that, uh, what I shared earlier about omni-channel uh, trend, the trend now is just because I've gone digital doesn't mean everything has to be online. Let me repeat that. Just because we go digital does not mean everything I do has to be online. Okay, digital doesn't mean online, huh? but online means you must be digital. Okay, I hope I, I, I made that clear. If you are online, you have to be digital. Otherwise, if you're not digital, you can't go online. But being digital doesn't mean all is online. 
Okay. So, just, um, yeah, sorry. Okay. So, so uh, I think the, 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 the alignment is the business priorities and if you can articulate the business priorities, which to me, uh, immediately I would think of my customers because without my customers, I have no, I have no business and my priorities are, are useless. So this is where I will begin. And if I can't meet my customers' expectations or exceed their expectations, then I need to relook at my digital transformation. And what, what, what should I be doing? Yeah. Uh, in I time, I hope I answer said, questions. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, my I would just add to what C said, which is uh, don't think only of digital technology. Think of digital capability. I'll give a simple example. Uh, our team from Big APC has been coming to Singapore, uh, Indonesia, etc., for the last 15, 20 years. 20 years ago, the hot thing was SMS marketing. Everybody has to do SMS marketing. You must collect people's mobile number and do SMS marketing. 10 years ago, BBN, remember BlackBerry Messenger, BlackBerry Network? That was the medium. Every business card, every business card I got in Indonesia had a BBN ID on it. That was the big hot thing. Today it is WhatsApp, it's Telegram, it's etc. So the technology keeps changing, but the technology capability is messaging. So I would say messaging is an important technology for you today. You must be able to message with your employees, with your customers, and so on. Another one is collaboration. You need some way to build and come together, get software together, etc. So I would say uh, development and uh, collaboration. These are three capabilities that you must have. Any more questions we can take, or should we stop there? Or no, we still have a little bit of time. Uh, any other questions? Teman-teman ada yang mau nanya, mungkin dalam bahasa Indonesia juga nggak apa-apa. Nanti uh, CE si bisa ya bahasa Indonesia. <laughs> yeah. I can understand most of it. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm not fluent enough to answer in bahasa. Yeah. Yeah. But the question si of assessment was very good. Indonesia. Oh, ah, CE si bisa paham bahasa Indonesia tapi nggak bisa jawabnya. Oh, nggak nah, apa-apa bahasa Indonesia. Bahasa Indonesia. <laughs> Anyone has any more question or comment or? Maybe that one about assessment. I would just say a way to assess the impact of digital is A, is it reducing risk? Because I use digital, I have reduced my risk by so much. That is one kind of a, a metric. Second metric can be productivity. Because of digital, my productivity has improved. I can do this process much faster. I can do this process much cheaper. And the third metric is innovation. Because of digital, I have new products, I have new services, I have new internal training modules. So these are three buckets of assessment, risk management, productivity, and innovation. Oh, one more question has come. Yeah. yeah any, data, any data for digital talents in Indonesia and ASEAN? Uh, we, we do have data, but it is not completely Indonesia. And uh, is it many or limited? Uh, in a way, it's limited just to answer your question briefly, do you prefer to, to buy or grow internally? You're talking about digitalization, right? Or the digital talents. Um, usually it is a mixture because uh, some talents you just can't grow within your, your organization. You need to hire from outside. Um, they are specialized, but some of them it will be good to grow internally because these are the people who understand the workings of your organization. Um, they know the culture, they know the politics behind it. And um, so, so, so when you grow them, it's, 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 a, it's a very good fit for them. But uh, people who are grown internally sometimes face a, a different challenge. That is, they are sometimes constrained or limited by their knowledge of the local, right? Just now, I spoke about a, a, a mindset change, right? The mindset change is where you think beyond the scope of what is in front of you. You think about how to work with others, how to play with uh, other players, right? And, and that is something uh, a local uh, internal person is a challenge an internal person usually face. Not that it can, they cannot overcome, but usually it's a one step of a challenge that they will face.
Madan? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, uh, this often is uh, uh, asked, should I outsource my digital? Should I insource or develop everything myself? The real answer always is a balance. Uh, there are some very fast moving areas of technology where you need to get some outside inputs, uh, like a consultant, like a developer, technology partner, etc. But the core knowledge, your core business should be entirely in-house. You should do most of it in-house, but you can get a lot of training, a lot of workshops, capacity building from the outside. So you can get definitely embrace ideas from the outside. This is a world of information abundance. There are so many case studies, so much knowledge out there. So definitely, we hope to be part of that journey with you also by helping you discover good case studies and helping you come up with these things. But ultimately, the leadership must be from within. Your leader must decide what to do and how to do it. Uh, uh, one Jenny, our most successful digital initiatives are transformation. Okay, um, there are a few, but I think uh, I wouldn't call them most successful because we don't we don't rank our successes. <laughs> but one successful uh, digital initiative that I've been involved in is um, we try to convert uh, the the cost the cost component of a factory, and um, we transform the entire factory into activity-based costing called ABC. And because of that initiative, uh, the whole factory had to be digitalized and therefore everything has been accounted for digitally. And because of that uh, conversion, the entire supply chain of the factory has to be transformed digitally as well. So just because we started with something called a costing model of measurement, we have actually uh, transcended many, many rounds of digitalization, which included the entire supply chain. So uh, I think in, in, that is a very extensive involvement where we may have started the fire in a very small place, but it, 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 it affected many other areas. And, and at the end, after one and a half years, the entire stream of uh, process for the factory has been completely digitalized. So I, I, I mean, that's just that's, that's one success story that we can talk of. Uh, this, this factory is based in Singapore. I think uh, it's time. Hello. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. I, I'm, I'm, still reading, I'm still reading one more, one more question. Oh, you're going to ask one last. All right. One okay, question. so this is, uh, okay, Sandra, this is the last question, right? Okay, uh, we, we, we try to answer all the questions that you asked, right? Um, why L&D is the first area to become digital? Oh, I, I, I did not say that L&D must be the first area to become digital. I'm saying example, if L&D is the area to become digital, usually it gives you an advantage because digital transformation requires skill sets. If you already have the skill set, if your people are ready, then L&D did not be the first area. You can just go ahead, right? And I think uh, in many examples, uh, it, let me come back to the Singapore example. In Singapore and China, for example, right? Uh, you will compare both of them. There are, there are reports that in China, all you need to do is you must have a face and have a bank account and you can go to Kentucky Fried Chicken, you look, you stare, at, you make your order and you stare at the screen and your chicken is paid for. So they have facial recognition and all that. And the 1.3 billion population in China, all their faces are already in a database. Wow, how about that? That's just complex, right? And they're able to do that. But in Singapore, people can't do that. Why not? You are only 6 million people. Why so difficult? Why can why China can do it? There are only 1.3 billion people. Back to answering this question, I think uh, if your people are not ready, there's no point to push it. So to your uh, remark there, to reduce costs, not only start at L&D, but also at others. Okay, so I agree with you, but I think... Um, it is just like an, as a nation, a, a very young nation is trying to grow. The first or most important investment that a nation has to do is in education. Because if your people are not educated sufficiently, you can't progress. Because a lot of things come from 
learning, whether it is self-learning, self-directed learning, or self-taught or machine learning, it is all about learning. So I think it is not just, uh, I agree with you that you need to, if you want to do, you want to digitalize, you should digitalize in all areas. But if you have a fixed amount of money, where will you place your bet? And this is where I, I, I come to ask this question. And I said, if you need the skill set, you should place your bet on l and I, I hope I have clarified this. Uh, I'm not saying you must start with l and but make sure that your people are ready. I would suggest use this table again. We gave you this digital table. Ah, so you yes. can visualize where do I need the skills gap the most? Which gap do I need to fill the most? Maybe it is e-commerce, so I must design a good website. Maybe it is internal collaboration, I need a good portal, things of that sort. So use this tool to imagine and discuss in your company, like a communication tool, a visualization tool to map where is my gap today in these six boxes, eight boxes, and where should I focus right now? So for every company, the interpretation of this table is different. It's a conversation you must start internally. Where are our strengths? Where are our weaknesses? What is our budget? And then prioritize. See, keep saying prioritization. You must prioritize in these eight boxes, which is box number one I need to focus on today. All right. I think uh, everybody's question, question yeah. already been answered. It's very exciting to hear uh, everybody's uh, wanted to know more about this topic, but again, time is not on our side. So thanks again, CE, Madan, Jason, and the team for uh, sharing a very interesting topic tonight. It's a pleasure. Uh, and also for Teach Me, who has been a good host <laughs> for One HR and everybody. I think uh, before we close, uh, we can open all the video so we can take a group picture. Ah, yes. Thank you all and have a great evening. <laughs> all right. Uh, for everybody whose video is still off, please turn it on. And we want to take a group picture as well as uh, on the chat box. Please don't chat now so I can screenshot. <laughs> All right. Everybody keep smiling because you might not be on the first page all right one two three first page smile and second page oh video are are off <laughs> all right. anyway i'm just gonna do a screenshot all right everybody it was a lovely uh, sharing tonight thank you everyone and see you in one hr community Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank, you bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. Great. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Cheers. Nice. Enjoy nice your dinner. Bye. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Henny, Dian. Bye. Sayang. Ada toh ternyata. Beb, Beb, Dian. Beb, Beb, Dian. <laughs> Ada siapa lagi tuh tadi? Ibu Tina. Oh, ada ya. Iya nih baru join tadi.